The drunken cop character trait has become a convention and cliche of many forms of storytelling. Revenge-fueled vigilantes who have nothing to live for are more commonplace than you can imagine. Yet, my all-time favourite example of this is Max Payne, a New York police detective who went rogue following the murder of his wife and newborn daughter. Max Payne is a man who went through hell in an attempt to stop crime families, drug manufacturers and even organ harvesters. But what makes me curious is not necessarily Max himself, rather than his reaction to the situations he finds himself in. After losing his family, destroying his career and becoming dependent on alcohol and painkillers, it's easy to develop a profile of a depressed addict who spends most of his days sulking and feeling sorry for himself. Max's psychology is indeed interesting, but this video will focus on the notion that Max's dangerous situations develop because of irony rather than motive. To put this into context, traditionally, a narrative unfolds through the use of a goal that moves events forward. A film historian once said that characters exist for the sole purpose of completing an itinerary, something which Max himself doesn't actually have. As a major fan of the series, I will make it clear that this video will have little to do with the previous games, due to the fact that I personally hold Max Payne 3 as the definitive conclusion of Payne's story, despite possibilities of a sequel. Everything I say is all subjective and opinionated, and is by no means a reflection of what the developers intended. I'd arrived in Sao Paulo a few weeks before. I was working a protection detail for the kind of people who need protection in a town like this. And what kind of town was this? One where I didn't speak the language and they didn't water down their drinks. So for now, we seem to get along just fine. Set in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Max Payne has left his previous life as an NYPD detective behind in favor of taking a job as private security for the Bronco family. The situation that Max finds himself in is one of government corruption, in which near the climax it's discovered that one of Max's employers, Victor Bronco, has set up a human organ trafficking ring using police and private mercenaries. Irony comes from one thing found in this plot. Max has nothing to do with anything. Nothing. He's probably not a bad guy. He's just a man caught in the crossfire of a very rich family. He's private security, not a cop so he's not exactly within any power or reason to do anything about it. But it's his cliché personality that drives the events forward in an ironic way. Max openly admits that his life is a car crash, and is self-aware of the fact that he's a nobody who would be naive in thinking he's a somebody. Max has nothing to live for and clearly wants to end his own life. He suggests much of the time that he has suicidal thoughts, and the way the dialogue is written can only be interpreted as a complete emotional breakdown. But Max states time and time again that he's too weak to do anything about it, and this is where Max's life becomes ironic. He wants to die, and says he's waiting for someone to finally put a bullet in his head. Maybe I just haven't found the right guy to put a bullet through my head yet, I just don't know. But ironically, it never happens. Ironic in that the gameplay consists only of one everyday guy mowing down hundreds of people who are better equipped than him. The fact that Max is able to make it out of a police station alive and shoot down an entire army of mercenaries is far too fetched to be even vaguely seen as plausible. Everything he goes through is ultimately impossible. He should be dead according to the standards of realism. But this abandonment of realism plays a role in giving a dark sense of humour to Max's story. Look at any Hollywood action movie and you'll see where the realm of plausibility diminishes and cliché takes effect. Schwarzenegger and Stallone films are famous for absurd action sequences, where the main character emerges from heat to combat with only a few scratches, and somehow always has the time to come up with a cringeworthy one-liner before executing the villain. Bullshit. Max, on the other hand, is a satire of John McLean, 
a rather more realistic portrayal of a hero if you count the first Die Hard film. Clichéd action narratives tend to portray daring sequences that put the protagonist at risk, and Max Payne plays heavily on this trope in a less dramatic way. Max's philosophy on life is pretty simple. I've come this far, why turn back? Why were they throwing numbers at this problem? But then, I'd chosen to be here. I wanted this. Was it redemption? Not really. It was pathetic desperation, and not much else. He's not trying to be profound or thought-provoking, which indeed are two ideas largely absent from action movie fiction. Instead, Max's entire narration is mundane and just a rather obvious description of what's going on around him. He's become a cliché of himself, and the game plays on the idea of satirising a troubled protagonist of a noir thriller. Max Payne is the anti-philosopher of philosophy as he's not trying to think outside the box rather than trying to think like every other human being on the planet, in that anything he does is purely with luck and without confidence. In fact, every dramatic moment in the game is just a random act of spontaneity over reason. Max does things out of stubbornness, not because he wants to. The influence of John McLean is much more apparent due to the fact that both characters have similar characteristics in making brave but idiotic decisions, mostly because he just happens to be in the middle of it. The game ignores any attempt to give morality to Max Payne, instead making Max live with accepting his naive and pathetic attempts at being human. The idea of morality, which most narratives have, is completely absent which is ironic for a game of this style. Instead, the intellect of the game is found in Max's godlike ability to get out of an exaggerated situation without ever getting the bullet in the back of the head that he so wanted. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. You buy yourself a product and you get what you pay for. And these chumps had paid for some angry gringo without the sensibilities to know right from wrong. Here I was, about to execute this poor bastard like some dime store angel of death, and I realized they were correct. I wouldn't know right from wrong if one of them was helping the poor and the other was banging my sister. The cliched action sequences are part of the game's ironic sense of humour, as Max is ungrateful to be alive. But what makes Max Payne 3 stand out is the ending. After taking down Bronco's plane and stopping a terrorist organisation, he's left with no reward, no acknowledgement. Max is ultimately alone again, and his victory is left in the past, unlike his failures from before. Max's last line is a cheesy one-liner which suggests that he embraces his circumstances, and like one of the themes of the game, Max finally gives acceptance to his situation. The last scene of Max walking ironically away from the sunset is actually the only positive ending his character can have, one in which he can accept the life he's given. But the lack of dialogue or narration represents a clear conscience, something which he never had. When Max states he was too weak to end his own life, the truth was probably that he didn't want his end to ever come. Despite his stubborn and regretful personality, Max was clearly looking for relief, but in the form of a future. He's a man that simply won't die, and it's a personality trait that many of us would kill for.